Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Education Coordinator at the Financial and Consumer Services Commission. And part of my job is to talk to people all over the province and share information to help them make smart saving and spending choices. Let's take a closer look at the word budget, what it means, why you should have one, and how to make one work for you. A budget anyway? Well, in a nutshell, it's knowing what you have, what you need, and where it needs to go. A budget is a tool that helps you keep track of your money. It's like a roadmap for your finances. If you don't have a budget in place, you run the risk of spending more than you have and accumulating debt. As students, we don't always think of the cost of everyday life. We live at home, our bills like food and clothing are often taken care of, and we might even drive a car that we don't have to pay for. Learning how to be financially independent is an important step to take while we're young, and to set us up for success when we move out on our own. It's a lot easier to start forming responsible money habits now rather than trying to break bad habits later on. And it's much harder to recover once you've started to overspend, abuse credit cards, and find yourself in debt. Here are some questions to think about while we begin our discussions on budgeting. How do you keep track of what you earn and what you spend? And what are some of your common day-to-day -day expenses? Think about it from the time you wake up and brush your teeth to the time you go to sleep. What are some of the common expenses you'll have to pay for when you move out on your own? And what are the benefits of having a budget? Is following a budget easy or difficult for most people? Why or why not? Remember, a budget is just a tool that helps you keep track of your money. It tells you how much money you have, where it comes from, and where it needs to go. But budgets aren't just for tracking your money. They can also help you prioritize spending, avoid or pay off debt, prepare for emergencies, and save for the future. We often build a budget on what we think we should spend, and what we want to do is build a budget on what we actually have to spend. If we set out to build our budget on what we think we're spending, rather than first looking at our spending and building the budget realistically, we may be setting ourselves up to fail too. Before we get into the steps to creating a budget that works, let's look at reasons why budgets sometimes don't work. Knowing what to avoid when making a budget will help you be more successful with your budget in the long run. So budget is a bad word. and Most of us run for the hills when we hear the word budget. We think it will be too much work or too restrictive. We don't think about the benefits of budgeting. I totally had an aha moment when I changed my perspective on budgeting. Instead of focusing on what I was losing, having less spending money to do the things I wanted to do, or only paying bills all the time, I instead looked at my budget as a way to get the things I want. I want to share a personal story with you. It started when I was 12 years old. I grew up in the country and I always wanted a pool. But we had a lot of mosquitoes where I lived, so I am sure my parents felt that a pool was a bad idea. And they probably didn't have the money to pay for one either. So they told me no. I asked them every summer for years, and they just kept telling me no. And finally, when I was about 16 or 17, I told my mom, when I grow up, I'm gonna have a pool. And she laughed and said, well, that's your choice, and maybe you will. Fast forward to when I was 25. I had a four-year-old son by then, and it was the summer that the large inflatable pool started to be popular. I think they cost around $150 at that time. I saved and was able to buy one that was about 12 feet wide, and my son and I fit in it enough to splash around. <laughs> we had so much fun playing in that pool that summer, and every few years I'd buy a new one that was a bit bigger as they wore out or busted. And every summer my family would spend hours swimming and playing in these pools, and making amazing memories. Finally, about six years ago, I was able to install a permanent above ground pool on my property. It was a goal that was over 25 years in the making, 
from that 12-year-old girl that dreamed of a pool. So I'm sharing the story for two reasons. The first is that no matter how long it takes, if you have a goal that means that much to you, you can work and save towards it. And secondly, you can find other ways to get the same kind of joy while you work towards your goals. I have just as many wonderful memories playing in my cheaper pool as I do in my large pool. I was able to have fun with my family in a much less expensive way with the pools that I could afford at the time. So living within your means and finding joy and happiness without overspending can be a positive that budgeting can help you achieve. Now back to our examples of what to avoid when budgeting. We give up too quickly. So a budget takes time to work properly. And a budget won't make your debts go away overnight. And that $1,500 you need for a trip or a down payment on a car isn't going to magically appear. Just like my pool example, remember to find ways to enjoy life now within your means while you save for a future goal. We don't adapt. If you expect to have the same budget every month, you're setting yourself up for failure. Income and expenses often change from one month to the next, so your budget should change too. Include things that come up at certain times of the year as well, like birthdays, holidays, and yearly expenses, so you're not caught by surprise when they are due. We don't prepare for surprises. So budgets are for saving as well as spending and we should aim to save at least 10% of our income. Part of that should go to a rainy day expense fund. And even if you can't save 10% right away, as long as you start with an amount and form the saving habit, that's the key that will help make saving easier in the long run. And we don't track the little things. Small purchases can add up quickly, so track everything. I like to think of budgeting like dieting. If you tell yourself you're never going to eat cake again for the rest of your life, you are likely going to break that promise at your next birthday party. <laughs> but if you track every time you have a treat, like cake or coffee for example, you'll be able to see that maybe you're overspending and this could be a great place to cut back a little bit in order to have a healthy budget. Now that we know what a budget is and why you should have one, let's look at a simple three-step approach to building a budget that works for you. Step one, money coming in. Gather your pay stubs, bank statements, receipts, and bills to figure out how much money you currently have coming in and how much you have going out. Sources of income can include allowance, a part-time job, tips, money from special occasions like birthdays or Christmas, etc. Something important to note, treat variable income, such as tips and gifts, as bonus income. Include the funds in your budget, but don't rely on them to pay your regular expenses. As the name implies, variable income varies, so it can't be counted on to always be there to cover regular expenses. Step two, money going out. Expenses are divided into three categories, fixed, variable, and irregular expenses. And it's important to divide your expenses into these categories because the way we plan and pay for each expense is different. So a fixed expense. Those are bills that are the same every month. And these expenses include things like rent, car payments, and insurance, or maybe even gym memberships. Variable expenses. So this is spending that may change every month. And these expenses include things like groceries, entertainment, cell phone bills, and transportation. Irregular expenses. These bills or expenses typically do not come up regularly and often come out of the blue. They can be fixed, like your vehicle registration, or variable, like car repairs. Because they are often unexpected, they can derail your budget when they are due. And we should be putting money aside each month to prepare for these expenses. Debt payments. Prioritize paying down debt by paying more than the minimum payment. You'll be debt free quicker and pay less interest. And it's easy to lose track of when bills are due. Missing payments can mean late payment fees and damaging your credit history. Try to build reminders and regular payment dates into your budget so that you don't miss any payments. 
savings. Pay yourself first by putting money into savings before you spend. Treat it like a bill and you'll be on your way to having an emergency fund to help with unexpected expenses. Even small amounts can add up fast. And you can learn more about the different types of expenses by checking out our Spend Smart NB video on creating an emergency fund. And step three, add them up. So your income minus your expenses should be zero. Subtract your total monthly expenses and payments from your total monthly income and your budget will balance when your income and expenses are the same. If you have more expenses than income, it's time to review your budget and cut back. Be reasonable and realistic. If you are going to spend money on it, put it into your plan. And my biggest advice in all of this is this, give all your money a job. So whether it is spending, saving, bills, entertainment, or investing, if all the money coming in has a place in your budget, you'll be able to see where the gaps are and make adjustments accordingly. Remembering that you have to have some spending money and adding it into your budget from the start will help you stay on track. And if you know that all your expenses and needs are accounted for, you can feel confident in your spending amounts as long as they have a place in your budget. So next steps are keeping track. There's lots of ways to keep track of your budget. You can use a notebook, an Excel spreadsheet, and we have a great one to download on our website, or even apps. Your financial institution may also have some budget tracking solutions that you can tap into. The bottom line is to keep track of what you're spending. It's easy to forget about smaller purchases and overspend. So remember to do a double check as well at least once a month to make sure you're seeing what you actually spend in order to make adjustments along the way. And include all your expenses so you don't miss an important payment and factor in some spending money so that you can still treat yourself from time to time and avoid overspending. If this is your first budget, don't be afraid to make mistakes and adjust. Some months we spend more than others and we may over budget in some categories and under budget in others. So tracking your spending habits will help you get better with budgeting in the long term. And remember, we want to build a budget on what we actually have to spend, not what we think we should be spending. Your budget needs to be constantly adapting. Be honest and realistic and make sure the numbers really show what you're spending. Allow for change and surprises. So some bills always come along that you didn't expect. And give it a chance and stick to it. A budget will not change your financial life overnight. You've got to stick with it to see change. So I hope this changes your view on budgeting and helps you realize that budgeting is your friend and it's a way to help you get the things you want. Visit our website at fcmb.ca for more tools and resources to help you on your financial journey.